Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another Turning the Page. I'm losing my thingy here. Uh, this one is uh, British Battle Tanks, World War I to 1939 by David Fletcher, and I believe this is an Osprey book, it is. Uh, the list price for this book is in the UK, £25, the United States, $30, and in Canada, $35. But those are just list prices. You'll probably be able to find it for less, uh, especially on like Amazon or something like that. But... Um, this one was in, in association with, with uh, blah, 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 blah. I, I will start that again. This one is with, in, it's with, no, is in part associated, boy, I'm just, I can't get this right. In association with the Tank Museum is what it says here, and that's what I'm trying to get across. Um, so I assume that's the Bovington Tank Museum, right? Isn't it the Bovington, the Tank Museum? I, I believe I want to say it is. All right, so on the back it says the tank was the most important new weapon to emerge from World War I. It combined mobility, protection, and firepower in a way that would change how 20th century wars were fought. From the first prototype of the Mark I tank to the faster, more modern Whippet of 1918, armored... <clears throat> hard to think of the Whippet as, like, you know, modern, but I guess it was. <laughs> armored warfare expert David Fletcher, MBE, examines the frenzied development of tank warfare during the Great War itself and reveals how British inventors and engineers pushed tank design forwards during the increasingly tense interyear wars of 1920, the 1920s and 30s. All right, so David Fletcher, a pretty well-known author for those of you reading, especially, uh, I think he's done quite a few Osprey books. But uh, but yeah, uh, I'm not sure his background. I'm guessing probably military historian, much like many of the, their good authors are. In terms of quality, print publication, Osprey is, you know, very good. Um, I'm not seeing any production issues in terms of the quality of the book and so forth. Uh, table of contents, we've got chapter one, the tank idea, chapter two, in the beginning, prototypes and marks, one, two, and three. Uh, the Mark IV tank, the Mark V tank, the medium Mark A whippet, wartime prototypes, marks six, seven, heavy Mark eight, and Mark nine. The end of the new war and beginnings, or, sorry, the end of the war and new beginnings. Uh, Vickers mediums, the 1930s tank developments, the countdown to war. Light Tanks, 1927 to 1945, marks 1 through 6. Um, this book was just put out, obviously, in, in 2016. I think I've been maybe sitting on it for a little while, but not too long. Uh, chapter 1 Tank Idea, obviously a lot of text here with black and white photos. Uh, I'm not sure there's going to be more than black and white. Let's kind of, oh, there are some color plate photos or illustrations in here. So, but period photos, obviously, um, of different types of tanks. I believe that's a tank. Looks more like a grater, um, but uh, but yeah, uh, different purposes probably for a lot of these different early tanks, uh, mine mine uh, detecting and not detecting but mine mine exploding I guess and, and other things like that. Um, this is the little willy. A lot of these tanks are probably available at the I'm guessing they're probably at the Bovington Tank Museum. So uh, this book probably kind of you know covers a lot of the different things you would see there in, in greater detail than what, what you're going to get there. So, uh, but yeah, some color, nice color illustrations here from side side views. I'm um, just going to flip through now and just kind of give you a brief overview, but you know, there's another nice uh, angle to do. And we, that illustration looks really familiar, like I've seen it before, but uh, maybe not. Maybe it's unique for this one. And um, again, lots of photos. The photos, I doubt, being that they're World War One tanks, you're probably not going to find a lot of completely 100% unique photography in this book, but um, but in terms of just the presentation and so forth and, and uh, the textual content um, is going to be, you know, where it's at in terms of the why to get the book, obviously. Uh, but yeah, there's some great photos in here. Probably being that it was, was produced in association with the, the Tank Museum it gave David a lot of access to things that he might not have act, had access to otherwise. So uh, yeah, that's a, probably a, a big plus there. And uh, again, post-war, getting into the later versions and uh, the Whippet, obviously, which again, hard to think of that as a modern tank, but okay. Yeah, I mean, it definitely is more going towards the modern tank versus the, the very large early marks that had, you know, the tracks going way up and down the whole uh, chassis. Hey, look. Oh. No, that one's giving a little creaky sound, too. Apparently, Osprey books are good for the creaky sounds. Uh, lots of weird little designs here, and uh, that th that alone may, may you know be what uh, people who are interested in tank history and stuff would be some reason to have this is just in terms of some of these early prototype designs or early mid-war designs and things like that. So again, just kind of flipping through, and you can see a lot of different breakdowns here going into the Vickers and uh, and so forth. So uh, yeah, um, again, this book uh, did I give the this was two hundred and uh, thirty-six pages. Um, 
It just came out recently, so you should be able to find it uh, out there right now. And uh, our thanks to Osprey for sending us this review copy. I would make this available if somebody wanted to do a more in-depth re written review on this book. It would need to be somebody in the United States or North America at least, though, so I can send it media rate and not have to pay huge amounts to send it overseas, which just doesn't make sense for us. Um, but um, that said, uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, questions, please leave them below. Uh, if you like this video, please remember you can click on the like button, whether you're on our sites or on YouTube. And of course, uh, we'll see you next time on Turning the Page.